you have a lot of homework tonight, Beckett? Julie is a working mom with four kids. And tonight, some of the kids' friends are over after school, so the house is bursting with activity. Beckett wants noodles with no sauce that aren't in the refrigerator. Isn't that nice? So I think that my kids don't experience stress at the same level as I might. So it's real easy for them to pick up on that stress. And so, you know, I never thought that they would be comfortable wearing masks. It took me in my own profession a long time to get used to just wearing a mask all day long. And they just kind of flow with it. This is the lab. This is where we make little humans. Julie is a fertility doctor and can have pretty stressful days. My kids are pretty chill and pretty lucky. Um, they must have gotten that from my husband. <laughs> As kids start the school year, experts suggest parents should be mindful of their own anxieties. The over-the-top anxiety is not going to help them. It's, it's helpful to explain what we're worried about, you know, yeah, there's still a lot of sickness around. We want to be careful, so we're going to wear masks. Um, at school, they're taking care of you. So really talking about, well, these are the things that are still concerning, and these are the things that we're all doing to keep you safe. And it's not just young children. We as adults sometimes don't realize that, that kids can feel that. And when they're older, maybe they can understand it a little better. They can recognize, oh, mom is, is pretty anxious right now. I don't need to take that on, um, but not always. School's stressful, no matter if there's a pandemic or not. The start of school is busy and all the new activities and reintegrating into some of that after a year and a half of being out of a lot of those activities is hard to balance it. And the start of this school year is truly different for parents, too. Dr. Avanti Bergquist is also a mom and a member of the Renton School Board. There used to be open houses and you could go and see the classroom where your child was going to be sitting, meet some of the other parents, but that doesn't seem like it's going to happen this year, right? Right. And we don't even necessarily get to um, see it on the Zoom screen either, because that was kind of an interesting thing about our kids being online was, oh, you could see their classroom and the other kids and see what they're doing during the day. So yeah, it is going to be different. I think we've learned, like I said, a lot of flexibility <laughs> over the last year and our schools have too. And I know our school district learned a lot of uh, better ways on how to engage with our families. Dr. Berquist says if you're struggling, you should seek professional help. If you are really having a hard time and your normal coping skills are not working, it's great to go see a therapist. They're another person who can help you navigate through that. Oh, Maddie has soccer. Meanwhile, during our interview with Julie, she found out one of her kids' choir practices had gone from in-person to virtual. We have corn on the cob. It's from the farmer's market. Julie says the pandemic has taught her to roll with the changes. I think I'm more of a cup half full person. Like I love that these have pivoted to Zoom and I can attend an open house with a teacher face to face from my kitchen 10 minutes after feeding my kids dinner and then I can run in, um, pick somebody up from a sport. And so that ability to be so quickly available and to attend these meetings remotely has been a huge blessing with four kids. And if you're worried about COVID protocols at your child's school, Dr. Bergquist suggests that parents should simply ask, email a teacher, principal, or a school district official. And you can hear more advice for parents from Dr. Bergquist on my podcast, Mindful Headlines, text podcast to 206-448-4545.